Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles, and the Fae are robbing you blind. Boo! Oh, I don't like Western. I bloody knew it. Very thief! God damn, Russell! <laughs> uh, I'm David Knight, your Dungeon Master, and I'm joined by the ever-trusting Fate Marked Five. Say hi, everyone. <sighs> hi, hi. hi, Shopping part two. When it bites you in the arse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now... Before you attempt to get your stuff back, um, mm. we're actually going to let fate decide the name of the horses. Um, so we've all put the we've put the suggestions from the episode as well as all of the things suggested in the Discord into a big list, and we're going to roll the dice to see what the name of your two horses are called. Come on, the one I want. Come on, the answer I Who's, want. Who wants to roll the dice? I've got one ready in my hand. Go for it. Yeah, Grace, Do it, you got Grace. it. All right. Good luck, everyone. Please be good. Eight, which is Pip and Lord Crumpet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. so we're going to welcome Pip and Lord Crumpet to the party. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <Is> <laughs> Beautiful. That was a Discord suggestion. I give them two days before they burst into flames. Oh, no, right. <laughs> it's going to be that much worse when they die. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yep. no. <laughs> oh. We should not get attached to animals in this show. Go. No. No. Oh, oh, whilst you think about their inevitable end, uh, let's cue the theme <laughs> tune. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and d20 Let's play d and Your haggard characters swaggers with daggers in each hand You've all discussed what you must, but even best they planned Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blades don't fail your saves No risk too great, no choice to roll This is your story No dust, no glory Confront your fate with every roll Every Inside one who will pay the price Then chance of success for us upon the dice No risk too great, no choice too bold This is no small rolls So, after a night's rest at Drake's Watching Enkidu sleep The Fate Marked Five climbed aboard <laughs> that's their that's new so wagon <laughs> That's what happened what? <laughs> That's what they did You're all watching Enkidu sleep um, you climbed aboard your new wagon and set out toward Forlos Vale, trying to decide what to call the new horses as they went. Um, which we've now decided. Pip and Lord Grumpet. Huzzah! 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 During the journey, you crossed paths with a travelling Eladrin salesman, Wester Merriman, who convinced you to spend money on various magical trinkets from his caravan. He also sold you a Volpertinger called Turnip, which was a hamster-like creature from the Feywild, before leaving you in peace. Now, employing his Quill of Comprehend languages, Orin was able to understand Turnip, whose real name sounded like wind rustling through leaves, <laughs> with Juna then affectionately dubbing him Russell. Ruana was not as impressed with their new companion, and for good reason. After an evening's heart-to-heart -heart between Juna and Enkidu, Russell casually raided your belongings, stuffing into its mouth everything that the party had bought from Wester, as well as a number of magical items from Orin's backpack. Before and my ball bearings. And your ball bearings. Before flying away <laughs> in the dead of night. <laughs> that <was> so dodgy. <laughs> Finding yourselves robbed, you decided to turn back in the hopes of tracking down Wester and retrieving your belongings. And that's where we pick it up. <sighs> So my question for you all is, how long are you going to spend trying to find Wester? Because well, I do, I do have a suggestion. Okay. What if we send Ruana after Wester? Oh. How far can she be away from you, though? Dear. 
<laughs> it's in the spell. She can go as far as she likes, I believe, but you lose cons uh, yeah. like the connection. Yeah. After I a thought mile, she could, she is could that like, right? Something like that. Uh, my 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 idea is basically we send Ruana looking, and we give her I don't know forty eight hours. Then I got a stack of lavender in the tea caddy. I resummon her back, and she can let us know if she's uh, found them or not, and we can continue on our way to Four Lost Vale. Is this a setup for a, for hilarious like animal based one shots? <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Aggie can go with her. <laughs> no, because I can't just summon Aggie back. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even need to do the lavender. You'd just be able to summon her, wouldn't you? Unless she died. Oh. Unless she died. Yeah. Oh yeah. I die. I only need to do that if she dies. You can just ping her out of existence. Yeah. So this is this is my idea. That means we don't waste time looking for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, David. Hmm. Are there any? obvious tracks on the path or any sort of indication about where this fey thief has gone. So you were talking to him at around sort of midday the day before and you have travelled for half a day in the opposite Ooh. direction to him and then rested overnight. Oh, for fuck's sake. And then in the morning have kind of, you've started turning uh, Pip and Lord Crumpet back towards where they are, but the road itself is covered in tracks from all the various carts and horse riders that have come and gone during that time. So you can't point out exactly which are his. I do want my stuff back, but I don't know how we're going to follow him. Um, just as I like your suggestion, Juno, just as another thought, I was thinking we could always stick our head back through the door at some point or, or maybe message Heron or or someone back in Vernal Rise in case he turns up I think up he's there. like small fries. Like, I don't think Heron's going to like bother be like, he's probably going to be like, look, you got duped. It's your own fault. M move on with the mission. <laughs> well, assemble the consortium we've been had. <laughs> Rally the Arcanists. There's a fake con man on the loose. Swindler must be caught. <laughs> I like your spunk, Orin. We could always send a message to the butler. Yeah, send a message to Neurum. That's it, Neurum. What about other people we know on the road? Uh, Deacon Fireheart Button. <laughs> oh, yeah. He might be going around somewhere and probably would like a quest for and, vengeance. And Alfie. And, and Al Dwayne. And Dwayne. You know what? Well, I think we should find the compass and, and summon <laughs> Silith Valia, the greatest warrior that ever lived, <laughs> to track down these bloody rogues. <laughs> and get our useless shit back. <laughs> it's not useless. I mean, speak for yourself. But I mean, we, we had a whole day of buying useful stuff. In Vernox. I mean, <laughs> the problem is some of the useful stuff's been nicked as well, like the frosting, the anti-frosting Should I potion? ask Ginger if she passes him to knock him out? <laughs> <laughs> In three weeks' time. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it wasn't just the things we bought that got went missing. It was most of Orin's stuff. Yeah. Unless you think Orin's stuff's useless. Legitimately, can you do your thing? <laughs> can you do your thing without the things that was taken? I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, yeah. It's just, it's just mainly the anti-frosting stuff. That's, that's the problem. The rest of it is, it's neither here nor there. But you've got, like we said, the, the, the formula, so to speak. I got the formula, but we're going to need to get our hands on some frosting or some of the algae stuff that Alfie mentioned. I think. Well, there's going to be plenty of people supporting Berrien in Forlos Vale, so I reckon there's going to be lots of frosting. That's true. Woohoo! The hex might be <laughs> most likely be in the city. I'm happy to step up to the first person that looks like a drug dealer and ask them for some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, good sir. <laughs> I feel like you can tell the tone of an episode by the opening five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Say it isn't so. <laughs> okay. Then I then I think sending Ruana it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is it worth me? And am I allowed to change her into a Volpatinga for her to find the Volpatinga? Um. Or is that not something I can do? Maybe turn her into something that like has really good tracking skills. So like maybe like a dog or something that could like sniff out like a mm. like a blood. What are they called? Like a bloodhound. Mm. Like one that Sherlock Holmes has got mm. with the big floppy ears. Yeah, yeah. A magical bloodhound that can smell fey creatures. Yeah, I'll say Ooh, the Volpatinga like it. itself because it's a fey. She wouldn't be able to take that form. Fair enough. But yeah, like some some other tracking flying creature. Absolutely. A tracking flying creature. 
Yeah, cover more ground. Mm. A goose. A goose. <laughs> it's not the most stealthy, though, is it? Oh. No. <laughs> Very on brand. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a hawk? Should I turn her into a hawk? Oh, hawk's good. Yeah, a hawk yeah. with yeah, big hawk. flappy ears. Okay. Isn't that... That's... that's herbs and spices to do that isn't it it is herbs and spices I'm going to how, start the clock on that now baby David <laughs> the, the secret blend of Juno's herbs and spices, and spices. <laughs> It's some, Please tell me some JF, JFC. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Right. Okay. So if we're sending Ruana back down the way we came, because yeah. we did turn around at the end, in the last episode. Yeah, you started back. So yeah. Do I'll we stop, have to three I'll point to- stop. turn? Yeah. Pip three and Lord point turn. Pip and Lord Crumpet. <laughs> what um, is the turning circle of Pip and Lord Crumpet? <laughs> 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 um, as for our trajectory, um, Fallos Vale sits at the top of Lake Aira. And if you're looking oh, for like... Oh, someone knows where we are. I'm looking at the bloody map. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, if, or if you're worried about stuff, you mentioned algae. Um, I mean, like the lake will be, could be full of like certain materials you might find yeah. useful. Was it algae? Sorry, David. I might have just made that up. Uh, it was some uh, fungal thing okay wet place mushrooms yeah. great yeah <laughs> okay i must say orin i'm glad because the enlarge potion went missing didn't it well, it did yeah i'm glad that that door has been enlarged before you lost that <laughs> <laughs> that's very true it's now just a bit stuck where it is but it's not in a bad place to be stuck at least no i think i think we did a good thing yeah i mean i guess we can always take it out full size but um that feels impractical yeah i'm sure we'll figure out a way how to make our own version or even yeah. learn a spell before we get back. Oh, yeah, I've got a few ideas. There we go. Orin says, thinking about when he levels up. <laughs> Good show. There we are. Um, we, uh, so so we're, we are three-point turning, travelling towards Full Lost Vale, and we're sending Rowana in the form of a hawk back down the other way. Bye, Rowana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Can we say I've done the ritual? Yeah, like I can say, yeah, you're sat in the back of the, yeah. of the wagon. Like you're still whilst like you're being moved. Yeah. So you can definitely just perform the, the ritual there. And should we say 48 hours? If she's not back, I'll bring her back. Or 72? 72. 72. Well, it's up to you. I mean, we're two days behind. Like after mm. a day, you'd probably want to give up, wouldn't you? Why not, why not give her 48 hours unless you need her back sooner? There but... we are. Yeah, fine. yeah. So, yeah. I telepathically let Rowana know this. She's very happy to go. Mm-hmm. And off she goes. And off she flies. Yeah, once um, you finish the ritual. She's obviously been listening to the whole plan and the discussion anyway. Um, But she does. She sort of flies up, circles the wagon a couple of times, and then sort of takes off quite an altitude uh, back the direction that you had been traveling. Um, And you carry on. It's only about another, I'd say another day's travel before you reach Forlos Vale. And in that one 24 hours, you don't hear back from Ruana. Okay. Uh, she hasn't suddenly appeared or anything like that. But you also don't get the sense that anything has happened to her, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's not like you go, oh, she's back in like the little pocket dimension or anything like that. So mid, mid-morning mid on the uh, on the second day there, long before you even reach the gates of Forlos Vale, you can see that the city is silhouetted on the horizon in the distance. Uh, it's massive. Beyond the numerous farms that are dotting the wide fields in front of you, it's a sweeping metropolis of towers behind 300-foot-high walls. Oh, my gosh. Um, 300 foot. And with the way sort of you're sort of riding through, like, the, the bouncing fields, you can see the lake... How did you pronounce it, Daryl? I quite like that pronunciation. Oh, no. <laughs> Aira. 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 I like it. So as you're sort of bouncing through the, the hills, um, you can see Lake Aira uh, shimmering in the sunlight sort of um, to one side of the city. As you approach the walls, you can see that they're lined with statuesque guards all stationed along the parapets. And the noise beyond the wall is almost deafening before you're even through the gates. Whoa. Oh. What, what kind of noise is it? Just the hustle and bustle of city life. Um, oh my god! There is uh, paved streets throughout, so the clacking of hoofs and and creaking of cartwheels are just echoing everywhere. Uh, pedestrians are arguing with carriage drivers. There are hawkers bellowing out um, 
try and trying to attract sellers and buyers to their wares, um, selling little trinkets and things. Um, there are patrols. Watch, of- we go shopping, Enki, dude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are patrols of guards barking orders, and just everywhere is quite crowded, especially near the gate. Um, you realise as you've approached as well that the wall that you can see, you're coming from the southwestern sort of approach. Um, mm-hmm. That there are multiple gates along it, uh, and you find yourself in one of the middly ones, which is marked out as Ashgate uh, above it. As you edge in, what are you doing? Uh, find a place to um, near an inn, maybe to stable the horses. Yeah, okay. Part the carriage. We're, we're yeah. just traveling through, yeah. right, guys? We were just uh, swinging by, getting the lay of the land, and then moving on, right? Well, there are spoons. Uh, oh yeah, the spoons. Course. I think if anyone asks, Guys, how we're here forget? for the spoons. <laughs> four spoons here. There's four spoons here. I personally have somewhere I would, I would like to go um, during our visit here. Um, I think we could definitely do with investigating at the Arcanist Consortium. Perhaps they do a tour, definitely open for visitors and tourists. Mm. Um, who knows? Um, of course, we want to find out what's going on with the political state. Yeah, for right sure. Now, uh, yes. The, yeah. Berrien and um Timon. Timon Prevost. Timon Prevost, Simon Prevost <laughs> yeah. Timon Prevost. So um I also I don't know between the rest of you, you might have personal things that you might need to do here. I need to go buy some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you do need to buy some drugs. <laughs> I wanna see if it's possible to speak to Timon Prevost. Because Ooh. he would be Gilgamesh's brother by blood. Oh. So I mean, he did ask, he did say, find a way to make contact. It would be helpful to us. Yeah, but... See if that's possible. Totally with you there, buddy. But just just keep in mind, if you're him and then a random guy comes up and goes, yo, your half, respectfully, bastard brother, is living inside my head. He's going to look at you like you're a little bit not so straight. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's a, I've come to understand in our, from our recent adventure that just... Having the blood of the king in your veins means something, and apparently I have it. I still don't understand how it is that my friends are inside me, but if Erida is telling me that I have king's blood, whether it's mine or not, like, what, do I have a separate compartment for my friend's blood? What, what is that about? Well, like, I, I trust your judgment. I'm just saying, like, you know, just keep that in mind. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I feel like these things maybe aren't going to be just a passing through we might need to be here a couple of days to yeah really find out what's going on and who we need to speak to yeah it's a good idea yeah it'd be good to have a little bit of a snoop around um yeah and also i, I mean i i not that i want to necessarily listen to anything that that thieving marathian snowball said but um there was a mention of visiting city hall potentially i don't know if that's worth the look around as well Okay, so we want to um, set up shop. We want to um, go in various things and just do, do a little bit of research on like politics. One person could do that. Um, I can find drugs. Um, <laughs> I can uh, find drugs here. Oh yeah, and um, uh, and Kido could go and have a look. Are we splitting the party here, guys? <laughs> well, let's get settled first. Let's yeah. find out what's yeah. going on, yeah. and then we can start assigning jobs to people. Okay. Yeah, and then we can pair up. I suggest we pair up, given how big the place is. It's pretty big. Yeah, uh, it would be nice to maybe stay together a little bit first, but yeah. just to get our bearings before we go off in different directions and get completely lost. I'm saying this for me, really. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree, Gwen. Is there a guard nearby, David? Um, yeah. There's a. There, there are patrols sort of passing through. You notice a couple of sort of constable type looking folk stood on the corner just chatting away cool what you have noticed of the guards in this town they they're all wearing sort of silver breastplates which makes them very obvious um with antlers kind of like carved around the 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 chest um sort of slightly embossed carved like into it as as a design pattern uh good sir uh, excuse me um uh, we're 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 weary travelers and want to uh Pitch our tent in a in a in a lovely tavern nearby. Have you got any recommendations that um are you know good soft beds, plenty of ale? Uh yeah, there's plenty of taverns around. Uh, you looking for somewhere cheap or somewhere 
mark your horses there or what do you what do you need yeah preferably something with parking you know like you know 48 hours that sort of thing if there's like a ticket system or something we could work out with that oh yeah so uh, yeah so um so you're new to town are you uh and he looks at Enkidu. Yes. yes yes we are all right uh so uh just to let you know you're currently in ashgate um i'd say cheapest places uh probably you want to be heading over to Wrighton. Wrighton's probably pretty cheap or even if you want to head up more toward um the Willow Gate, then you could uh, probably stop in Grent or Red Walk. They're both pretty, um, pretty cheap, uh, and they'll have places for horses and stuff. With, what with so many gates this side of town, Red Walk and Gwent. Grent, 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 Gwent is a yeah. completely Sorry, different Gwent thing, three there. <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Um, and um, and uh, we're looking about for the. Uh, we're also um, adventurers that are competing in the spoons. Um, the, oh the, yeah. The Twain Tide Tea Tournament. Twain Tide Tea Tournament. 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 I'm sure you've heard of it. Guys, how could you forget? I know. It's like it's been only, you know, a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, do you know any, like, taverns that are associated with this competition? Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, oh, I can't remember. It's the one that posh people hang out in. Um, it's over in Newford. It's, uh, uh yeah, over one of the, the bridges. The Noble's Nook or Good Company yeah, or the, the Fancy Forager? Noble's Nook, that's it. The Noble's Nook. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty expensive if you want to be staying there. Not not my kind of place to be honest. But um, Newford, it's over over the river. Is there anywhere we could potentially buy a map, or um, is there a uh, an information centre we could get access to that information? Uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't know about a map or nothing, but um, <laughs> you might be able to pick something like that up. I don't know, City Hall. They've got some like historical information type pamphlet things Ooh. oh and where's city hall we heard someone mention that as a good tourist spot it's a it's not too far from newford over in the vale in the, in the main city center okay so we want to like go to like right and red walk and grant for like you know tavern places and then we want to head over to vale and newford for like your maps and whatnot and your yeah 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 tea tournament yeah Great. And then just out of interest, is Vale where like the City Hall is and the Arcanist Consortium and all that jazz? Oh, so uh, the Vale's got the Lord's Assembly and City Hall in it. Um, but Arkenwell has got uh, the Arcanist Consortium. Arkenwell. Yeah. Arkenwell. Great. You guys probably could do with a map, couldn't you? Yeah. Yes, we really I could. think we could uh, get our horses in the direction of City Hall and then yeah. maybe... Simplest way, I'll be honest, follow this road. Right the way down, you'll reach a crossroads. Take a right, uh, cross over the bridge there. Um, you probably want the cart bridge rather than the course bridge. Go with the cart bridge. Um, cross over there. That will lead you through Trist and through Arkhamwell, and that will lead you through. Then you'll sort of skirt Governor's Mile, and you'll get to the Vale. Right, got you. But I, what I probably do actually stop off at Wrighton, find a place there to to park up. <laughs> yeah, and then and then carry on. Great. So it looks like we can afford to play, stay somewhere in Wrighton and then cross the river afterwards yeah. to get into the city proper. Yeah. That's very kind of you. Uh, what's your name, good sir? Uh, Malty. Malty, you have been a gent and a scholar. We much appreciate it. Thanks, pal. You're welcome. <laughs> David just holds up a bag of chocolates that we all know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that. Tarrell's head was down. He was doing notes. I was writing notes. I felt so strongly like you just made that up on the spot. Yeah, I was so that satisfied. Is good. That is good. <laughs> I missed that as well. I'm so glad. Oh, oh dear. All right. Take care, Malty. Yeah, and you. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Malty. Welcome to the city. <laughs> all right. I hope no one treads on him. We follow those directions. Yeah. Follow the directions, get into right and find a, a, a inn with a stable. Yeah. Nice. Um, and yeah, as you travel through, you do notice that there are quite a few sort of drinking establishments of various kinds. Some of them are definitely bigger and slightly more hotel-like. Um, all of the buildings here are at minimum three floors. Jeez. Yeah. Um, some of them have extended even further above with, with like sort of small towers and, and things like that. But everything is much bigger here and just busier. And you can see why with the amount of people coming in and out of all of the buildings that they just need the space. So can you make uh, an investigation check to find uh, a tavern? One of us? One of us? Or... Oh, one of you with advantage, whichever, uh, to find a, a, a tavern to your liking. 
will say. Abracalad. This is a job for Abracalad, isn't it? Go on, Abracalad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm answering to that name. <laughs> <laughs> you know why. Oh, goodness. New dice have let with me advantage. down badly on this. With advantage. Yeah, I know. With advantage. Oh That's God. a 15. Oh, you that's okay. fine. <laughs> it was a one and a seven. Sorry, for an African lad, that's <laughs> unacceptable. Exactly. That's, that's unacceptable. Exactly. <laughs> Don't make me make it a non-natural 20. <laughs> Flash a genius, the one into a 20. Sure, African lad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, so you reach the crossroads, and it's actually sort of just further on as you start moving toward the bridge that you find a... Uh, a tavern big enough and you can tell even as you pass that their their stables are not empty but you can see that there is space uh, for your cart so you rock on up um, it's a place called uh, Feathers Pillow <laughs> <laughs> when you have to make up pub names on the you spot you're recording in yep. your bedroom tonight today uh, David <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a vague reason for it Okay. Um, Feathers Pillow. That's all right. You've walked past Feathers Market to get there, so Feathers Pillow. Ah. (laughs) Makes sense. Makes sense. (laughs) Hello, tavern owner. Please tell us why you're... It's on the back of the menus. No, the tavern owner's called Heather now. (laughs) (laughs) Heather at the Feathers. Heather at the Feathers. Yep. Um, yeah, so you walk in, and again, um, there are quite a few people already drinking, even though it's mid-morning. A few of them having an early lunch. Um, you get the impression that the sort of the people in here are probably um, like out shopping or are just like having a socialising day more than that they're working in any way. Mm-hmm. But you do approach. Uh, there's a, a young half-elf woman uh, at the uh, at the bar, uh, sort of braided brown hair, sort of classic tavern clothing sort of a big apron across her uh, uh, wrapped around her stomach um but yeah she sees you all approach uh she's like oh hello 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 um can i help with a uh, food drink uh, lodging please and uh somewhere to stable our horses oh certainly how many have you got have you got a cart with it or uh, yes. yes horse and cart two horses they're called pip and lord crumpet pip and lord crumpet and uh, how long will you be looking to stay for um, we're not 100% at the moment, maybe a couple of days. Yeah, a couple of days, no worries, you can pay day to day if you prefer. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah, well, we've got space at the moment, uh, we had a whole bunch clear out from yesterday. Oh. Uh, so, oh. yeah, it's um, it'll be five gold for the day for the two horses in the cart. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Okay, we can all cover that. Because some of us didn't spend our money on dumb shit. (laughs) 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 And will you be wanting rooms for the night or are you just looking to park them for the day? Um, Rooms for the night would be appreciated, please. please. So how many uh, amongst the five of you? Uh, How much are the rooms? Uh, Well, we've got single rooms. They're a gold piece each, but we do do have a a room with six beds. They're, They're bunk beds, but... You know, uh, six beds. Uh, that's only two gold pieces for the night. Ah, bunk bunk beds. Bunk's fine. Yeah, I'm fine with bunk beds. Bunk beds. As long as you don't mind if I take a bottom bunk. Uh, oh yeah, that's fine. I don't uh, mind at all. You, you decide amongst yourselves. I've never <laughs> slept in bunk beds. That sounds fun. Sorry, what's your name? Heather. Yeah. <laughs> fine weather we're having, Heather, oh, in, in this uh, feather. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, uh, do you want to you want drinks or anything whilst you're getting settled, or do you want me to? We'll get the lad to to take your horse and cart out and park them up. Um, I think we might. I mean, I, I think we might be setting off fairly quickly, but we'll be back later. I think. Yeah. Of course. Uh, can I just take a name? Sorry. Uh, so I, just in case I'm not working. Oh, uh, Car Hilda. Yes. Car Hilda. All booked under Car Hilda. Yes, please. Car Hilda Thorn. Okay. She's paying for it all. No. <laughs> And Kiru puts, like, the five gold down for the stabling of the horses. Oh, that's kind of you, buddy. I'll put the other two down then. Thank you. All right, well, you leave them with us. Um, and we'll, um, we'll keep it, we, like, it includes feed in that forum, so, so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, you, anything that, you, we're not going to go raiding your stuff to feed the horses. No, of course. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, no worries. Well, yep, you just drop your name in when you come back and uh, we'll give you a key at that point, if that's all right, to the room. Sure. Oh, yeah. Prefer to keep the keys on site. All right. Um, cool. Thank you. Um, shall we have a little sit down, guys? Rest ourselves for a sec yeah. and plan? Oh, sure. Does anyone want a drink while we have a little chin wag? Uh, yeah, actually. What does everyone want? What time of the day is it, David? 
Um, it's probably about eleven o'clock. I'll say. Okay. Um, Morning. Yeah. Um, okay. Can we just have like a platter of like uh, you know your various vegetables and things like that, like a brunch sort of thing, maybe some tea. Oh yeah, some charcuterie. Yep. Whatever that is, <laughs> yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Do you want any cured meats with that at all, or we've got some dried fish? Yeah, I'm a big fan yeah. of the fish. All the fish. Yeah. Let's do that. Try right. salt with fish. Oh, right. Yeah, pot pot of tea and a plate of charcuterie would be lovely. Thank you. Absolutely. And garlic bread. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cheesy got... garlic bread guy, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if they can chuck some cheese in it, yeah. I mean, there'll be cheese on the plate, but yeah, all right. Um, that'll just be tea for the table and the food and just another gold piece for all of that. That's right. Juna puts that across the No, table. no, 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 Juna, Juna, Juna. I'll, I'll do this now. Oh, thank you, guy. Good stuff. Uh, oh, um, friend, sorry, can I... Do you have a, can I have some paper and a pen? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, sort of turns around, grabs a sort of scrap of paper from a like a baking sheet, sure. Almost uh, hands it over. Um, gets a little bit um, like almost like a charcoal pencil. And hands it to you. Okay, thank you. That's all right. Um, I'll go get sorted. You go take your seats. We'll bring it all over to you. Sure. Um, as you guys go to sit down, Akira is going to step outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, while munching away, I'll be, nom, 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 nom. I know. Is it? I'll be right back. <laughs> Won't take long. Um, second time I've ever used this DM. Um, mm. I'm going to use my character feature, uh, Criminal Contact. Ooh, fun. Yeah. So, um, however, we've not never established how this is done, but I somehow now t- know how to get word to someone I know to get me certain la- certain information that includes who's on the take, what criminal organisations are running around, mm-hmm. and yeah. Yeah, so I know the local messages, corrupt caravan masters, CD sailors, all that kind of shit who can div- deliver for me. Yeah. So maybe I get a whiff of someone looking like, hey, you know, I slip them a gold and they can probably run a message from me or something like that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I won't even have a check for this. Like, you kind of, you wander outside, spend a moment just watching a few people passing. And from where you are, you can see that the road carries on toward a bridge. Um, and so there are quite a few travellers back and forth. And you just catch sight of somebody... Who 100% is a pickpocket. <laughs> <laughs> they are not hiding it very well, but you're like, there we go. There's a nice low level criminal that you can approach and talk to. Okay. Sort of a, yeah, young girl, young orcish girl, sort of, uh, sort of britches and jerkin, high, high boots. Mm-hmm. But the, the kind of thing that she is ready to run at any point, but also looks very normal. Okay. Um, hey, uh, um, uh, so- let's have a word, my friend. Sorry, you you're right. Can I help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just want to offer you some very easy work for two gold. Won't take you long. I mean, I'm not that kind of work. Oh thanks. no, no, no! I just want some information. Just see who's who, who's running what. Okay. Uh, yeah. Got a particular interest in uh in powder, and see who's running it through the city. So, um, if you don't know, you can find out, and you can send word for me. Here, at the uh, feathers, feather, feathers pillow, the feathers, feather. feathers, feather pillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just information. Yeah, just information. Who's running some powder? And uh, I don't necessarily want any. Just want to know if there's any around to be around to be had, and where I can get some. I mean, you're going to be dropping me some coin though, first, aren't you? Um, a flicker of gold. She takes it and she just says, well, our six-sided friends are in town, if you're interested. That is interesting, yeah. Would you like to be introduced or is that enough? Oh, I think that's enough for now. Um, There'll be more work for you if you're interested, yeah? Okay. And the Feathers Pillow you're at? Feathers Pillow. Well, I'll be around. Okay. I work around here. Sure. All right, I'll keep a lookout. Sort of slow nod. Sure. <laughs> and Akili's just like, Homer Simpson's back into the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure. And just like That's that, he was gone. Mm-hmm. He was gone. <laughs> Don't want to make any hasty decisions without the group again. Um, <laughs> Akili back down the city. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why does it smell of smoke? <laughs> Akili, can you smell burning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Akili would join the others. So, yeah, by the time you've gotten back in Kidu, 
um, yeah, the teapots, uh, a couple of teapots have been bought out and um, a little wooden tray of, yeah, different sli- sliced meats, little pickles, a uh, selection of cheeses, um, slices of pepper and uh, cucumber and things as well. And, and some cheesy garlic bread. Yay! Yeah. Uh, I'll let you have that. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, this is really good. Um, okay, guys. So, really good. Uh, uh, do you get in, Kido? It's delicious. Yeah, sure. And he'll tentatively take a cheesy garlic bread. And like, Oh, that's a good <laughs> piece. That's a stringy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was going to suggest, and we got, like, things we want to do. Like, um, my suggestion is this, that... Um, Orin, you might find it interesting to go to the Arcanist Consortium, and I don't mind tagging along. Definitely. Maybe, like, um, Ankito and uh, Juna, you could go check out, like, maybe, like, what the political landscape is, like, any information you can grab there. And, um, uh, 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 Kahilda, you said that you wanted to go and do something for yourself, right? Uh, yes, I'd like to find out where the House of Decorum is. Oh, that's here. Yes. Sorry, Daryl and Enkidu both answer that. Dish, dish, dish. Spill the tea. <laughs> Spill the tea. Um, Did it, didn't Heron say something about an arcanist Axissa, huh? Wingthrup, who is regularly at the consortium in Four Lost Vale? Oh, as per episode fifty-two, we could go up to her and be like, "We're long lost cousins." Huzzah! Uh, Give us some money. I wonder if it might be safer to go to somewhere like the consortium altogether, just in case. It it might be sensible. I'm I mean I'm keen to go there definitely. Uh... And if also part of keeping our cover whilst we're here, if we do want to go and find out about spoons or not, or we can tell people we are. I don't know if we want to. Yeah, that was near. The consortium, was it? <laughs> the 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 noble's nook. Noble's nook. Noble's nook is in Newford. And it is in Newford. And the Vale is where, like, all the city, like, magistrates, city hall, was. lords okay, assembly. Yeah. yeah. I I would certainly like to know where I am a bit better. Uh, it's all yeah. very overwhelming. There's so many people. It's so big here, it's busy, which is is very exciting. But I I'd like to know where I am. At, a little better before I go off on my own. Okay, so why don't we do this then? We all go to the Vale, and then we split the party there. Some of us go to, like, um, the Noble's Nook, and some of us go um, and check out, like, the Lord's Assembly. That sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, the only thing with the Spoons competition is it might be useful for us all to be there. Oh, yeah, I just meant to, like, research it to find out, like, uh, okay. what the gist is. Yeah. Or do we all go to the same place at the same time? I don't mind. When we have a starting point where it's all together. Yeah, personally, I I would just like to stay in a bit more of a group to start with whilst we get our bearings and then and then split and go different places. But it's it's just, it's very exciting, but it is, it's so big. And Gwendolyn's kind of been like looking kind of starry eyed out of the window for most of this. She's not really touched the charcuterie. She's just <laughs> kind of like, she's always wanted to go to a city and now she's just finding it a bit overwhelming. Aww. Mm. Aww. Um, do we recognise mm. this, David? Uh, this what? reaction from Gwendolyn. Like this, this uncomfortable like 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 the sort of overwhelmed sort of sense from Gwendolyn. Um insight make, check. Make an I was gonna say make an I insight check. I think it's quite check. obvious. I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think Juna would definitely know what Gwen's attitude is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why she's basically agreeing with everything Gwen is currently saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um okay yeah I rolled a um an eighteen and my insight is uh uh, six. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. It's like, yeah, you can even if Gwen is trying to like sort of keep the anxieties down a little bit, you a hundred percent are picking up on it, and probably even like you can almost pinpoint exactly what it is mm. whenever like someone rushes by or like shouts outside without her even having to like make a big reaction. You are incredibly aware of all of the little things that seem to be uh, worrying her. Yeah. Yeah, okay, then, like, it's going to be better if we're all together and then we're all, like, going to the information center to get, like, all the, all the, all the, all the goodies of where, where things are. Cool. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, if we can keep out, uh, eye out for any uh, posters that look like me and oh, oh, good. also Thought. maybe crowd around me sometimes, just in Orin case. Orin has a quick look around the post for the posters in, in here. <laughs> Uh, make an investigation check. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, natural one, guys. Oh, 
Mm. You, no, you can't see. Gwendolyn uh, is anxious. She's looking as well. Yeah, yeah. You, you make another check as well. Okay. Yeah. Or, Orin looks around, gets distracted by the table next to them who are having a very <laughs> animated chat. <laughs> uh, investigation or perception? Uh, investigation, I'd say, because you're specifically looking for okay. it. Okay. Eleven. Uh, there's no notice board in here. Um, as you, I'll say it's, it's a slight retroactive, as obviously it would have been on your mind as you were traveling in. Yeah. There are like notice boards occasionally throughout the city, quite often on street corners and things. But again, from quick looks. Yeah, we were on the cart as well. So like she didn't get an in-depth look. Yeah. Like, but even from those, you haven't seen any. You saw a couple of wanted posters, but none with your face on. Great. Great. Lovely. Still overwhelmed by the city and worrying about that so yeah yes uh, to the the, the veil vale, uh, that city hall let's get a map let's do it yeah <laughs> sure. great idea and we march out Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. And the most important update is that our wonderful Chris Watts is getting married. Well, by the time you hear this, he will be married. So um, a massive congratulations to the newly married Chris Watts and his beautiful bride. We're also keeping ourselves very busy with shows. As I've previously mentioned, we've got Comedy of Errors with Vicky and Daryl, which is about to open. So we'll open the very day this episode comes out. It's looking fantastic. I've been doing the costume, nearly finished. My fingers are nearly falling off with the amount I've sewn. David's music is sounding incredible. It's going to be one hell of a show. They're touring for months all around the south of England, so do go and check them out. It's going to be a good one. You can also check out Taming the Shrew, which David did music for, I did costume for, and other shows. Well, we've got, of course, I'm still in Moulin Rouge. Yes, I know I've been in it for a long time, but I will be in that till the end of August, and then it will actually close. So, if you've been dying to come and see it then this is the time there's also dragons and mythical beasts yes Ben will be going to Edinburgh with that this summer so if you're going to find yourself up in Edinburgh seeing loads of shows and enjoying the festival then do make sure you go and say hello to Ben and go and check out the show because it's brilliant so with uh, that being said I've got a wedding to get ready for It's going to be hot, listeners, so crumpets, make sure you don't get too toasted. Keep yourself well protected from the sun. Stay hydrated. We love you. We care for you. And we can't wait for you to hear more of this very exciting arc in Forlos Vale. That's enough from me for now. Let's get you back to the city. You finish up your food, head out into the busy streets. (laughs) As you're travelling through, you cross over, you know the first bit of the journey, you're like, we have to go over a bridge. Great. Um, and you start crossing <laughs> over the closest bridge and like sort of looking up and down the river, you can see that there are four or five bridges along it that you various people are crossing over. But as you reach the other side, can you make an investigation check just to see if you can keep on track as to where you're going? Who's going to do that? 20. Dirty 20. Oh, wait, actually, investigation is intelligence, isn't it? Yes. So that's probably an 18. <laughs> Yeah. I rolled a nine, natural 19, so it's 18. 18. So that's enough. That is enough. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, initially it is like winding streets going in every direction, and you're trying to stick to sort of the main, like the, the main thoroughfares, the, the, the wider uh, roads. But even those occasionally narrow so that it's harder to, to figure out where you're going. It's only that as you are moving sort of more toward the city centre, that you can see some incredibly large buildings that have space around them. Uh, the mm-hmm. first of which you reach is the Arcanist's Consortium. Mm-hmm. It's almost got its own little wall surrounding it. Um, and there are sort of 50, 60 towers in this Whoa! one block. Um, all, almost every single one unique in their own way, climbing and like trying to beat each other on which is highest. All different colours, different types of uh, construction and stonework. It looks incredibly eclectic, but at the same time, quite impressive. But you, you clock it, you're like, okay, well, if we're near the Arcanist Consortium, we've got to be heading in this direction. And between the Arcanists, as you sort of travel around uh, the outside of the, the Consortium, there is another large main road. This is paved red, interestingly, but it's very wide and it leads directly to the Lord's Assembly. 
Uh, it takes you probably about half an hour just to walk down it. Um, but as you reach the Lord's Assembly, it's a much more structured redstone building uh, that's that's built um, probably as big as the Arcanist Consortium, if not bigger, of about six or seven stories high. Again, a few towers here and there. There's a large clock um, tower in one corner. And you're like, okay, well, we've reached the Lord's Assembly, so we must be in the Vale, wherever that is. Um, now we've got to figure out where City Hall is. Um, and so you ask a few people, ask around, walk through a couple of little parks, um, and eventually come to almost like a Tudor-esque style building, like sort of exposed timbers, uh, white, uh, painted white between them. And again, this is like a, this is larger than the Vondel's Manor uh, and of equal grandeur. Mm-hmm. But it very clearly states that it's City Hall outside. Is there anything that looks like a um, modern, uh, like a, a D&D equivalent of an information center? <laughs> <laughs> like an information center? <laughs> like, a, like a visitor's uh, information center, yeah. Um, not specifically. The, the wide, large doors of City Hall have got people coming in and out. Um, and not everybody traveling in looks to be official. There are normal looking folk sort of trundling up the steps to get through these wide doors. Yeah. Yeah, and if anything, the um, those that are in more official robes and uh, suits traveling past uh, don't really pay them much mind, so you get the impression that it's absolutely fine for you to walk in. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's, let's have a nose. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you climb the steps, pass on into a, a large foyer, and there is uh, a, a desk in the center of it, uh, a round desk with uh, sort of five or six people sat there, um, all chatting. Uh, to queues of people that are, are approaching them. You join the queue and it's not too long before before you reach uh, a young human uh, boy. I say boy, young man. Um, sort of stubble on his face, short cropped brown hair. He's wearing uh, the same uniform as all of the others. Like, sort of like, uh, almost like uh, shoulder pads <laughs> and uh, his like sort of pressed out lapels. Um, but he, uh, he sees you approach and he says, uh, Good afternoon. How may I be of assistance this this fine day? Um, we're new to the city. Uh, we wanted to come here first just to get see what the news is about the city. Um, what what's uh, if there's anyone sitting today? Any petitions or any news? Any business that's being handled in City Hall? Anything at all that help us learn more about the current state of affairs? Of course. Um, well. If you're new to the city, congratulations on making it to the city centre. That's uh, tricky <laughs> enough as it is, I'm sure. It was indeed. Thank you. <laughs> um, as for news, um, are you here for for work, for political reasons, for the tournament? Are you here for leisure? Oh, the, the tournament. The tournament, uh, the tournament yeah. and also the current politics. Um, of course, the, the succession um, as well. We like to stay up to date. Um, well, the uh, the political landscape uh, is always fun. Uh, obviously, with the Lords Assembly here, laws are always being made. Um, many meetings between the Lords heading into each other's uh, abodes. And obviously, um, you are welcome to uh, offer up anything that you'd like uh, for them to consider. But of course, it's highly unlikely to be brought forwards. Um, as for... Um, well, the succession, we do have both Lord Berrien and... Uh, Prevos in town. Uh, Lord Berrien uh, has his estates here and is, is um, well, he's very kind to the people, and uh, I believe. And, and Prevos is, I believe, he's doing a tour of the districts um, and causing all kinds of drama. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, it's fascinating. Fascinating. Um, I would like to detect thoughts on a surface level to just not ask this person what they really think and to hear what they think. Please! We can hear what he thinks. Yeah, they like Lord Berrien. <laughs> yeah, no, but I want to I wanna know if he's frosted. I want to know if he's got to say that about Berrien. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the surface f- thoughts are interesting. They... There is definitely a party line that mm-hmm. has been sort of uh, uh, as they uh, even as they're saying it they're, they're like and here we go again somebody mm-hmm. else asking about burying in time Prevost. you get the impression that they don't care either way but that 
Berrien has been praised by their bosses, but Prevos is causing protests. Mm, I see. And uh, they kind of look down uh, at a list and they say, um, I believe he's scheduled to speak in Mildock today, if you are interested. Okay, that is very helpful. Prevos is? Yes. Is there like a is there like a map or anything you could you could um give us that would help us find our way around the city? Of course, yes. Um, sort of ruffles around uh through a drawer, pulls out um a sort of a, a very simply drawn map of all of the districts and the city and sort of any landmarks, uh, which I will show you now. <gasps> <gasps> yeah. oh, the maps, so cool. Yeah, they pass you this uh this this map, um, which proves how big the city is. I I mean I, I haven't counted it, but there are lots, lots of districts. Oh my goodness, that is loads. Mm. Forty, forty districts. Forty, of districts. 40 oh, districts. Me. Yeah. Um. So it's a busy place. Um. But there are sort of like I say the the main landmark in each one has kind of been marked out. So, uh, like, the, the consortium is there, the uh, Lord's Assembly, obviously. Um, certain things like uh, the, the, the local prison is, uh, which gates, the name of the bridges, all of those are kind of marked on the map for you. Okay. Um, could you tell me where I might find the House of Decorum? Oh, yes, of course. Um, I believe that is in the Wolfwood. Wolfwood. We, I, can I get him to mark it on the map? Mm. Uh, yeah, sort of stands up with a pencil and like puts little, does that thing where they like sort of circle an area yeah. and you're like, could you stop drawing <laughs> on my map, please? Ooh, but they're yeah. like, with a really it's crappy there. byro. Yeah. yeah. Like upside kind of, down yeah. so it doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark's on the House of the Quorum for you. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. And would you happen to know, uh, as we mentioned, we're here for the tea tournament as well. Uh, I, I, mm. I know one of them's happening in uh, the Noble's Nook, but do you know where the other. Three spoon events are happening. Um, so I don't actually know where the challenges are happening, but the Nobles Nook are the organising tavern. Okay. Um, and yeah, marks on in Newford exactly where. Nice. Uh, again, with one of those like scribbly circles. <laughs> um, and you'll, you'll find the Nobles Nook just here. There you are. Can I help with anything else at all? Is, is Mildock? Oh yeah, there it is. Down the bottom. Mildock. Down the bottom. Mildock, yes, toward the lake. Lovely, thank you. Would you happen to know... Whereabouts Lord Berrien tends to stay? Where do the lords kind of reside? What part of the city? Um, quite a few of them reside in Plumebridge, uh, though I'm not entirely sure exactly where Lord Berrien's estate is. It's somewhere between Plumebridge and Stagrovia. Okay. Thank you. That is helpful. Be nice to explore, see how the other side live. Mm. Of course, of course. Obviously, uh, if you're willing to show support, um, he does work daily from the Lord's Assembly, so I'm sure he'd be happy to hear the people's support of him. And Kiru returns the same smile without the smile that doesn't reach the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Back. Yeah. Sure. Um, inside check. <laughs> oh. Oh. Go on then, make your charisma check, please. He's gonna go dark. This has been a while. He's gonna go dark. Yeah, it's been a long time. So, um, plus my charisma, right? Mm. Um, that should be a dirty twenty, I believe. Oh, nice. Oh. Um. So, yeah, as you kind of like pause for a second, um, and just sort of sit yourself back into that space inside of you, um. You get the uh, the comforting sense of Gilgamesh mm -hmm. moving forwards. And whilst he's not um, appearing in front of you as he has done before, uh, you get the sort of just the feel that the two of you are stood beside each other watching uh, watching the situation. Ah, I'm so glad you're here still. Yeah. How are you holding up? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Different? Pretty different. Oh no. It feels slightly more disconnected. Is that? <sighs> yeah, it does make sense. Yes. Um, how, how are you doing? I... There's no easy answer to that. I'm... I feel like I'm many different people at once. 
um, it's 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 hard to remember that I'm still me, if that makes sense. All that's gone on. Mm. Um, I've been. I don't think I've dealt with it well. I've kind of just put, you know, I we died. I'm trying to put that in the box for now because there's so much to do. But um, it's I'm I'm struggling. I, I got on it. Yes. It's a. Uh, it's hard to describe. We. It feels different, but. It doesn't feel. Like anything has changed. Right. We we all sit as we do. We can still see you as you are. Erida isn't necessarily getting in the way of any of that. But... Uh, I don't know, Kai. She hasn't tried to speak to you, has she? No. Maybe she can't? I don't know if she can. Good. We're almost separate from your body, if that makes sense. That does make sense. And really helpful for what ever has to come next. Hmm. And that's one bit of privacy that we can get. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Goodness me. Yes. How can I help you? Alright. I'm gonna put something to you. And Mm. you may or may not like it, but (sighs) what if there was an opportunity to dispose of Berrien soon I mean that's bold <laughs> yeah we don't often work <laughs> in uh, in the light in that way <laughs> but if the opportunity arises I of course would not dissuade you from from trying it that means a lot if they if we're gonna get you on that, onto that throne we're gonna need an ally mm. and Prevos is technically brother by blood. From the sounds of things. Um, I don't have anything to offer him. Yeah, I don't have anything to offer him in terms of, like, allyship, alliance. But a competitor out of the way, and one who is poisoning the people that he intends to rule. Yeah. That could be a pretty sweet olive branch if it can, it can be pulled off. We know the hex are in the city. We know that the powder being um, the frosting being dallied about the country is connected to him. Cut the head off the snake, maybe pave the way for a big push in our gains. This could be an opportunity. Do it. If you can get close enough, I think that will shake things up enough for us to well as long as favor doesn't swing back in Prevos's direction because of it yeah though the option is of course to make it look like it was Prevos's fault oh okay something to think about and that could mean if if we're going to swing that way yeah something to think about and also could forestall me making contact with him if we're going to put the blame at his feet because then he would know it was me and then we'd have an enemy yes <laughs> and the connection breaks <laughs> holy shit <laughs> <sighs> um <laughs> kid would just cough so yeah you kind of you blink in that sort of like secondary conversation um and you're back in the queue again with everybody else. So, um, everyone, um, where, do you, where do you want to go now? So, I guess, I mean, the question is now Spoons or Consortium or uh, try and see if we can hear this speech down in the... Uh... Have we moved away from this person yes, that's yes. helping assume. us? I would not have <laughs> this conversation in front of okay. them. <laughs> Did they, did they tell us what <laughs> time? Us. Did they tell us what time Prevost was talking? No. They said the afternoon. Do you know what time before we leave? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, madam. Can you just hang on, move out, back out the way? I know you're in the queue, but like, come on, just give a second. What time was that talk? Did you say? Do you mind? I was halfway through a question. I don't know. He makes his own schedules. Okay. Thank you anyway. 
just wait in the crowd and he comes out eventually, I believe. <laughs> and there was like kind of a look of disgust on their face as he like <laughs> asked the question and move away. So sorry, madam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be cool if we could go do the spoons and then go and do like one of the spoons and then like go and go to the speech thing. But we don't know if it's like yeah. early afternoon, late afternoon. It's like 11 o'clock now. Uh, David, when we passed the t- uh, clock tower, what time was it? Um, probably edging on toward like one, half one. Mm, I think we're already getting into the afternoon. We might need to make our way to Mildock now. We might get lost and and then perhaps we can head back to Newford in the evening. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Uh, depending on how long it takes. But uh, well, we could also find out stuff from speaking to Prevost's supporters, perhaps. Oh, that's yeah. true. Our friends yeah. might be there from the uh, caravan. Yes. Yeah, let's head down. To the mill dock. Oh, look at the mill dock. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, as you, um, as you head on out, uh, with the map in hand, it is suddenly so much easier <laughs> making your way around the city. <sighs> um, Such a good invention, Matt. And so you just, yeah, you, you, it kind of, it, it relaxes you. It means that you start enjoying the the architecture enjoying the the random little statues and and odd little details and, and funny shop signs that you pass it takes you probably about another sort of half hour 45 minutes to reach Mildock. just out of interest baby david are we going through temple green on the way that's what i was going to ask you are you um would you prefer to sort of head toward the river and follow it round or just sort of straight line it down toward Mildock? i think probably we we straight line it down through Governor's Mile, through Tillpot, through like just follow that main road thoroughfare, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you wanted to go through Temple Green, or it? No, I was just curious what temples there were. I don't know. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to know uh, who or what people worshipped. I'm assuming those are just the main roads, and there will be lots of other little roads and stuff that aren't marked on the map. Oh well, yeah. Like- no harm. Yeah, let's make our way through Temple Green then. Yeah. And then we can well, always yeah. just get around the edge anyway on the way through. Cut through some of the smaller yeah. roads to get the mill back. Yeah. yeah. We, as we don't know what time he'll be speaking. Can the walls still be seen from where we are? The walls? Yeah. Um, well, occasionally, uh, obviously, they're, they're just blocked by the, the size of the buildings around you. Mm. Um, but even from uh, where you are, sort of the, the central part of the city is slightly raised. Um, slightly higher than than um, the spaces to either side. So from where you are, like you can see across the rooftops almost of 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 the eastern and western sides of the city. Yeah. Uh, so yes, you do have a view of the wall. Okay. Of the walls. I wonder what they were designed to keep out. No, or keep in. This is maybe there's nothing to worry about for now. But like, why do why build a city within walls? I mean, it's gonna get cramped population's only gonna grow what happens to those who can't afford to live somewhere because there's no space how does the city expand if the walls are this big take however long to build isn't that just a defensive measure yeah yeah like we like we would maybe like pass. i don't know we didn't pass it particularly but there would be like you know um housing outside and you know they would expand that way and then during times of like civil unrest they'd retreat back again to the in the walls. Yeah. It looks like they expand up as well, like looking at these buildings. We got big walls like that as well in um in uh Fain Hatha. For real? Yeah. Um David, I would have Gwendolyn would have done a lot of reading about Fallus Fail um mm-hmm. when she was back home in Pryden. Um can I do a history check? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a sixteen. Oh. Sixteen, yeah. So um you know, during the um, the mortal uprising, way back before Dravain was even a country, that this was, or it became a a stronghold of of Forlos, of the sort of the the mortal rebellion, um, and the reason it's called like it actually it used to have a an elvish name that you can't quite remember, but it's called Forlos Vale because after winning people would come here, take their hats off in respect for Forlos, um, sort of the leader of the rebellion, and sort of pay their tithes. And also any any ambassadors trying to come in from Ayland would have to come to this city, uh, which is partly why it's it's sort of defended, because for a short time it was like the, the pinnacle, the, the the furthest forward city from from the south. 
the that the elves would quite often attack. Mm. Gwendolyn kind of recites all of that information, sounding really intelligent as she does it. Mm. <laughs> mm. And in and in the in the long time since then, um, obviously the the sort of the border has moved that much further, so the walls have remained, but the danger kind of isn't there anymore. I see. Unless a giant was to rise from the deep and kick a hole in the wall. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. Sure. Yes, Enkidu. <laughs> Any, anything could happen. They could well be in the walls themselves. <laughs> sure, giants are real, Enkidu. <laughs> <laughs> or like a big giant lizard um, that shoots lightning out of its mouth. <laughs> the dead rising is also quote unquote real. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Maybe giants are real. Let's not bring up flames and floods. Oh my God, Godzilla is real. <laughs> oh, look, Mildot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Temple Green, if you are kind of yeah. uh, skirting the border of it, um, it is a slightly greener space, a, a slightly greener district that you can see that there are quite a few more open fields and things in it. Um, it's almost sort of presented as a park. But from the notes that you've got on the map as well, the other places that are marked on there are religious institutions. Uh, there seems to be a temple for each of the four gods mm. uh, that that you are welcome to visit, essentially. Uh, but they all exist within the same space around these same open greens. Gotcha. Uh, cool. Right. Mildock? Yeah? Mildock itself, uh, there are quite a few, this might surprise you, mills. Hey! And... Docks! Uh, docks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's very much uh, like a working part of the city. There is um, uh, warehouses. Uh, there are people tra- uh, carrying like massive carts of uh, flour and and other things that are milled back and forth. Dust, <laughs> dust. <laughs> sawdust. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Not a miller. Um, oh, that's a good point. Grace as a miller. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Do you know what? Um, I know nothing about whether my ancestors were millers, but I assume they were. Hmm. Um, but I, I have been uh, spending a bit of time getting to know the windmill in Buxton, which is really cool, and I encourage people to go visit it. Hmm. Oh, Isn't well, it like it's still like a? They still even make some flour with like old machinery, not. Like it's like steam powered sort of thing. Oh. Not steam powered. It's electric now, but it would have been steam powered back in the day. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, really yeah. interesting. It's completely unusual, mm. unuseful talent uh, tangent. Um, but let's <laughs> <laughs> so, say so, not an unusual, <laughs> a useless talent. Like it's fine for people. Oh, yeah, to no, know how to mill. People, <laughs> like mill it's away. Really <laughs> mill away. <Yeah. laughs> And it makes sense that, like, near the Temple Green, there might be a bit of a field there, so you might get a bit of a breeze for a, uh, for a windmill. Maybe the there's... Uh, you've exactly. got a water mill near the river, near the uh, bay to the river, yep. so... It's exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically, yeah, between, between um, slightly more open fields and the, the lake itself. So it's got a breeze that travels right the way through that whole space. Um, which is, yeah, it smells quite fragrant in different ways as you're sort of moving through, as they're clearly grinding up some spices in some places and flour in others like it's it's quite a nice nice smell um Mm. but it's actually not that difficult for you to find the gathering of people uh in support of prevost as you're sort of moving through these warehouses um you catch sight of banners with his uh black winged black panther um on them you uh, start seeing more and more people wearing little rosettes as they're moving around um, and you kind of follow the crowd to come to uh, like an open courtyard space in which a small platform has been set up um, as we're nearing mm-hmm. or in we'll just say to the others um, should we put these on or are we just going in as uh, interested observers he's got out the 10 uh, badges that 10 uh, <laughs> were made for them <laughs> were given to them by the caravan Gwendolyn takes one and says when in Mildock <laughs> <laughs> yeah can't do any harm Juna yeah. takes one okay. as well yeah I think you do will take one I put one on and then I put one on Aggie <laughs> oh. yeah I'll have one too Juna goes to put one on Ruana realises she's not there and goes oh, oh. <laughs> oh Ruana um, so yeah you kind of uh, find a nice space in the crowd where how close to the platform do you want to be there's 
it's not packed just yet, but you get the impression with more and more people arriving that one, it looks like he's got quite a few supporters in the city, but also it how how much do you want to hear him? Would you rather be closer to the stage, further back? Uh, fairly close. I personally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I can I just make a suggestion, guys? Which is like you don't want to be too far in it because otherwise, like you know, it's opportunities for people to like you know go through pockets and things like that. We just mm. want to have like a little bit of space around us, just in case. We stay on our guard. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this guy is like you know, he is considered by some an agitator. And you never know what's going to go down in these things. Like, just from experience, like, in these large crowded places where there's lots of people, there's lots of crime, there's lots of chances for things to go wrong. Yeah, have, have a route out. Yeah, always have an exit strategy. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, and as, yeah, as you're sort of talking, guys, like, you're kind of you're gesturing to the fact that there are not a lot of guards, but, like, all around the, uh, like the edges of the courtyard, there's probably about 15 16 guards mm. just keeping an eye on the crowd mm. for that very reason so we kind of want to be like near the front but like to the side of the front yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like yeah. I, it mm. would be quite useful if i don't know how near we can get to the platform but if we were within 30 feet of him it does mean that i can and she sort of just taps her temple if that's what we want to do yeah and um, since if you're in if you detect that you're doing that you're in the, it'll be hard for him to pick you out being in the crowd if i do it on if i do it on surface level he won't know but we can just sort of see how it goes that's going to be a lot of voices well, in your head except thorn yeah wouldn't that be dangerous like we're in a crowd and you'd hear surface thoughts of everybody everyone in the vicinity wouldn't that hurt you i've never tried it <laughs> can you focus it and choose uh, i've never tried it with this many people around <laughs> me so i'm quite happy to try i assume i can stop it if it gets too much yeah give it a go why not um so yeah you kind of position yourself not like at the front of the crowd but like you know a, f- a few people back just to the side um sorry you can also target one creature ah, so oh, nice so i could yeah. target I-, I believe you kind of get a beat on how many people there are around you yeah and then can like try to pinpoint one. Zone in. I can hone in. Gwendolyn's gonna kind of be like, as she's moving, kind of absent mindedly, but on purpose, be like swinging her umbrella just to kind of be keeping a bit of distance from others. And then in the other hand, she's going to have a uh, secretly have one of her sharp hairpins. Mm-hmm. Oh. Nice. I think Orin is on the watch for any sort of pickpockets, having been alerted by Guy to the fact that that is definitely a thing. And with. <laughs> Um, he can't lose anymore. Yeah, <laughs> with the recent <laughs> loss ringing in his mind. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and and the not too like still quite recent loss of the caddy as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Gwendolyn is keeping her money in her cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in which case, Orin, do you want to make a quick um, perception check? Yeah, just around you. Yeah, I'll say because you're particularly aware yeah. of it. Guy looking at Gwendolyn will be like, nice one. And we'll put his coin purse next to his coin purse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm going to flash of genius that just because it wasn't great to get it up to a 13. Okay, okay. You're keeping like yeah, a 13 kind of watch. Um, you don't see anybody cool. nearby. And especially with Gwendolyn swinging her umbrella, people are giving you a, yeah, yeah. a wide space. <laughs> Ikiru will um, keep an eye on the guards. Um, just checking around, see where they're positioned, what they're kind of get a read on what their attention yeah, is. Yeah, they um, from looking at them again, most of their attention does seem to be on the crowd itself. Um, you get the impression that perhaps these talks have gotten a little bit raucous, mm. um, in the past. So they're kind of like just keeping aware of people, but also at the same time, you do catch like little bits from like the closest guards to you that are going yeah well i don't think you're saying anything that's uh that's incorrect like maybe we should you know and so you get the slight impression that even though they're here to do their jobs and keep the peace some of these guards might be on prevos's side nice is there anyone probably in our immediate vicinity who looks really nervous like really anxious about being there uh... You can make a, an insight check to the people around you if you like. Uh, 15. 15. Um, not nervous. Quite a few people 
seem quite excited that they're about to hear him talk. Okay. Just checking. Um, yeah. And, and the crowd itself, does it sort of look like the kind of similar vibe to the people that we saw in the caravan? Yeah, 100%. You don't necessarily see any of those exact people, but yeah, you get the impression that it's definitely predominantly his supporters with some kind of curious local workers as well that have kind of just popped along after lunch or after their shift or whatnot. Um, Akili would start to look to Gaius and like drop his voice a bit. I'm like, I got word earlier that the Hex were in town. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I could even get their ear if, we, if there was anything you had in mind or anything that comes to mind later on in terms of finding out anything or possibly interfering just as an option for now. Um, my sort of vibe, buddy, is that I stay away from those people when possible. I mean, it's good to know where they are, so I know where not to be. Mm. Um, but in terms of, you know, being one of the ants in the anthill, I don't want them to necessarily know that I'm one of them. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like, obviously, if stuff hits the fan and we need their attention, sure. But if we can help it, and, you know, with recent discoveries, I'd, I'd rather we just, like, don't... We keep our profile to ourselves unless we need to expand and find out more. Sure. Uh, glad to know where you stand with that. Yeah. Thanks, though, buddy. Appreciate the, uh, the uh, heads up, as it were. Yeah. And um, he'll... He'll pat his arm, but then he'll just grip it, maybe a bit longer than he intended to, and then just, just, just let him go. As you um, all wait there in the crowd, it continues to grow to the point that it's almost, everybody's almost getting a little bit agitated just in the fact that they have to wait and some of them have already been there for an hour and they just kind of want to get on with their day, but also hear Prevos talk. Um, and there starts to be a small like grumbling throughout the crowd that gets the guards on edge but from a sort of one of the warehouses um behind the the platform uh there are some doors that open there um and the crowd kind of get a little bit hushed some of them like some excited whispers and the first set of people that come out are kind of noble looking they they're not necessarily showing in, in any way but they're clearly of of wealthier stock um and they kind of uh they gather uh, behind the platform and to either side um, just talking amongst themselves and among them is Kasula <gasps> oh! 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 and as Timon uh, Prevos walks out of the uh, out of the doors and up the small steps to the, the top of the platform there is a cheer from the crowd and that's where we're going to end the episode oh my god oh my god is she wait? Is she, is she there? Kind of like does she, she look like she's there in body car, bodyguards like presence? I'll tell you next oh, time. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 You have been listening to David Knight as your dungeon master, Ben Galpin as Orin. Chris Watts as Gaius. Daryl Bailey as N. Kidu. Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn. And Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe and follow us on all social media. Thank you for listening to No Small Roles. Anon for now.